I'm DJ Mimaka. This is Paul Louise. My name's Robbie Edwards. My name's Anthony Cunningham. I'm DJ Reference. Hey, this is Mark Sine. I'm John Edge. I'm Tino Beal. I'm Stevie Wonder. I'm Mr. Fuck Kane. I'm Les Calvert. I'm DJ City TV. Yes, yes, yes. This is a JFM series. You're all listening to the Pure Thrill 3 podcast. With J Viper, baby. Welcome back, everyone, to another special episode of the Couture 303 podcast with me, Jay Viper. And my guest today is the Bootle Arms himself, the one and only Mr. Chris Butler. Um, How are you, Chris? You okay? I'm good, mate. How are you? Well, apart from the fact that we're both fucking full of coal, like, I can't believe yeah. we've caught a fucking a, a computer virus, literally. <laughs> been a bit of man flew myself to the yeah, arms, mate. I'm but, full uh, of, fucking, full yeah, of snot yeah. today, myself. So we'll yeah. crack on, mate. I won't keep you too long. So, well, yeah. as I always do with all my guests, Chris, right back to the start. Where and when were you born, mate? Right. All the way back in Bootle, mate. 1971. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm one of four in our house, mate. We've okay. got our Paul. You probably know our Paul anyway. Yeah, I know Paul, yeah. I know, uh, I know you were bouncing around the tunnels with him on Saturday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, there's our Paul. There's Mark, my elder brother, and I've got an elder sister as well. Um, okay. Yeah, born and bred in Bootle, mate. Yeah, uh, the, bo- the, bootle, the, boot- the Bootle arms himself. So what was your the childhood boy. like, mate? Were you, a, were you a good kid, naughty kid? Yeah, right. yeah, it was good, you know, but very, very quiet, you know. Had a, a small circle of friends. Just just get on with everyone, mate. Yeah. Um, right the way through school, you know, till I left school and then obviously started to work as soon as, as, soon as I come out of school. Yeah. So, what, yeah. so when you were a kid, like in the house, was it was it music getting played by your parents? You know, you know, you got an older yeah. brother. My ma said to me, "I know why you like music. You could just sit you in the pram by the window and you <laughs> sit there rocking away with the radio on." Yeah, and how I, much know, is I, that doggy in the window? You know, <laughs> I, always I always remember, you know, um, my sister would, would go out and buy like you know records and that and play them. <clears throat> So I was always into like the art uh, disco stuff. I mean, I'm I'm going right back to late seventies here, early eighties. You know, yeah. like the likes of D Train and the Sheik and Shalimar, all that stuff. Yeah. So <clears throat> I've always been into music, and you know, I always remember getting me me little cassette recorder when I was uh, when I was nine and, and recording the charts. On yes, it, standard. Like, <laughs> uh, little Pi Four watch, uh, <laughs> uh, and you press the button on it and. and you know, Sam, um, Mr. Commentator on the chat. Yeah, yeah. I do that every week. And, uh, yeah, I always love music, mate. And then, obviously, when I grew up, um, all this house music come in the charts, you know. I'm going back to, like, 86 here. You know, you sort of are, like, Mars, pump up the volume. And Tyree Cooper and Mr. Lee get busy. And all this hip house. And then you just have the radio on, Radio City. Uh, listen to all the music, you know. Back when it was and, decent. <laughs> yeah, you know, it was, it was, well, it was new, wasn't it, Jay? Yeah, it yeah. New to us. And, um, you know, what? I was always into stuff with loads of bass and loads of treble. So when all this house music come out, it was right up my street, you know. Key yeah. 103, Stu Allen, you know. Oh, mate. Don't get me started on that. We, we the, the, <laughs> there's a couple of things that, that come up quite a lot on the podcast. Um mm. And Piccadilly Key 103, which Stu Allen is definitely one of them. You know, I think for a lot yeah. of us, and I, I feel like I'm repeating myself again here, like, but for a, mm. for a lot of us, that was our introduction to, to that type of music. You know, that we, mm. we'd heard nothing like that before. I can remember yeah. listening to Piccadilly Key 103 and hearing the Scott Brown tracks and, uh, you know, the bouncy techno tracks and, and, and the hardcore stuff and all that. And it was like, yeah. there was nowhere else to hear that. There was no internet back no. then. You know, we were, we were all too Shit. young to go to raves and stuff like that. Um, mm. And as you said before, recording the charts, the whole press mm. and play and pause and, and all that business, that's that's the mm. fundamental start of being a DJ, isn't it? That's yeah. where we've all kind of cut our teeth. Well, certainly, you'd have your, your box with all your tapes in, wouldn't you? You know, there was, there was hundreds of them. I used to tape all the hip-hop stuff off, off Key 103. I'm going back to 1988 or 89, and I'd tape them all, and all the acid house come out, you know, I'm sort of like Baby Ford and um, Miss Mr. Lee and all that, you know, all that yeah. proper underground acid music. And um, I used to love all that as well, and me chart stuff as well, still plays all that. But then I seen someone on the telly on a set of decks, 
And I said, one of my mates around the corner used to play all this music as well. I said to him, what's that thing there what, what makes that record go into that record there? And he said, that's a mixer. Right, so I, I went <laughs> Ask your mom for a mix of a Christmas and get a Kenwood for yeah, thing. Kenwood thing, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want to so, make a cake. Yeah. No, I want to make a fucking mixtape and a cake, mum. They're not one of them, <laughs> yeah. do, you know, do you know what it's done, Jay? I went into town and I um, don't know if you remember a shop called Curly Music. Yes. Right. Um, so I went in there and got an MRT60, which was the one that I always remember um, one of the DJs on, on the... Uh, on the telly, and he, it had the green and the green and the uh, red lights yeah. on the top with four things on. I anyway, went and got one of them, and I got a. I had an on-cue turntable anyway, and then I went down the uh, second-hand shop and got a belt drive the uh, a second turntable. Yeah, and then I started buying record. I'm going back to even getting them out of Woolies here. Yeah. <laughs> Sell records. I go in there, you know, and get all the all the albums for next yeah. to nothing. Then they had twenty tracks on them. Yeah, and you come home, all the warehouse albums and stuff. And I started trying to mix on them. I got. I say I'm going back to the eighty eight, eighty nine. I'm going back yeah, to. Yeah. Um, by nineteen ninety, I had a set of Technics, and I was buying all the imports out of Walton Vale, and I was going on HMV, Quantum, and all that. Groover. Yeah. No, Quantum come later for me. Yeah. Quantum was in about 99, 98, 99. But yeah, I was going to Groover and all that, and um, three beats. And I, you, you'd, there'd be a queue of people there, the music would be belting. And you'd go, I heard that one in the Dromo, the quad last night. Yeah. And you'd put your hands up together. <laughs> you know, yeah. You know, you'd all be fighting, <clears throat> fighting over it. I always remember getting the Cola Boy Seven Ways to Love on the label. <clears throat> yeah. You know, 1990. Um, how, did, how did you find Three Beat? Because this this has come up a few times on the on the on the podcast. Uh, what I found in Three Beat was, mate, you had to be there at the right time. I think once they knew you were spending the money in there, yeah, they might might keep things to one side for you. But it was very competitive, Jay. There was only maybe a couple, three or four tracks, copies yeah. of them, and if yeah. you weren't in there at the right time, they'd gone. Yeah. So uh, it was very difficult getting the imports back in, as you know. It was like gold dust, you know, yeah. six and seven nipper. Yeah. Um, a tune, but yeah, that's, <clears> I'd, be looking, I'd be watching the uh, in the quads again back to eighty nine in the quads. Um, fortunately, I was I was old enough to go there. You know, I just turned eighteen. Uh, I was in there when I was seventeen, like but um, all those acid house nights started. Yeah. Mike Nola, um, Andy Carroll, John Kelly. Um, so I was there right from the beginning and, and seeing this introduction of a scene that is still living today. Yeah. Um, One place really I never cool. went was the quad, and I, 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 I looked the videos. I mean, I, I caught the tail end of the rave scene. I think I first went to Drome in uh, 94, um, right. November 94, before that I went to State and before that it was like Fallows 2 and stuff like that. We had You had Fallows down your end and we had Fallows yeah. 2 up our end. Um, so I, I caught the, the tail end of the rave scene and what mm. I caught was fucking amazing. I had some fantastic nights in the drone. Even the State, mm. I enjoyed the State, but the yeah, quad yeah. was like, the quad was the, at the quad and the Hacienda, they were the two yeah. fucking real fucking OGs of the rave scene in, in our country, weren't they? You, yeah, you, absolutely, mate. That's where it all starts. And the state as well, you know. Yeah. I never did go to state at that age. Um, I, I sort of stuck with the quad because it was a walk. So you walk the right way around yeah. the corner. Um, so it was great, you know, growing up in that music scene. So I, I'd, I'd watch the records going round on the turntable and then I'd go and buy them and the like them. Yeah. And then in the quad, you used to sell them as well in the quad as you went sure. out. <laughs> yeah. I always remember buying a last rhythm from there. Um, on the way out for a five, yeah. But uh, <laughs> I, hell? that's a belt that, that. Yeah, that's yeah. the man. Um, I said we're going like I'm bizarre ink and all stuff like terrorize that. and stuff like that. Yeah, so, some of them come into the chart, so you, you go yeah. to the back of the stands and get them for three ninety nine. Yeah, <laughs> no, rather than the seven quid import. But um, yeah, yeah I should spend a lot of money on on records, uh, Jay. Um, yeah. you know, but I'm not. Loads of them out there, thousands of them. Yeah, so but just going back, 
Go, just going back a touch then. So the first time you ever went out, so obviously you started buying, you started buying bits and bobs. Can you remember the first time you actually went out to a club and heard music like that on a big sound system? Yeah, it was it was the quad mate. Yeah. Uh, um, I mean, I went, I was at the kiddies fallows nights as well. You know, yeah. from when I was seventeen. So I, I did go into nightclubs and hear the music, Belton. Yeah. You know, when when I was seventeen, and that was fallows because again, that was only a walk away from mine. Was in yeah, and you you played in fallows as well, didn't you? Quite early on in your career. Yeah, that, I moved into there in uh, ninety two. Um, again in the crowd, dancing away, and me mate said. He's all right on the deck, you know. And <laughs> it, it was uh, Mike Cutter, it was. He's still going today. Um, Mike Lewis. He gave me a go. He says, yeah, I'll have a mix. And I always remember mi- mixing SLD, getting out. It was the first Gee. one I ever mixed. Yeah. Um, and then he let me do another one and, and so on. And he said, bring some records next week. Yeah. And it all went from there, really, Jay. You know, before I knew it, I was, uh, I was playing there uh, pretty regular. So was that and your then, first gig, or was it Fallows? Yeah, when I say a gig, you know, I was sort of... No no payments or nothing, but you didn't actually... A gig's a gig, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it was just, uh, you know, do you want to jump on and do a couple? Yeah, yeah. Give me a, give me a break. Uh, but yeah, that's where it all started, mate. And then we, we went into the, the Kiss then, didn't we, in 95? That's right, yeah. yeah. It had the refurb, and there was the yell in the back room. So um, I used to play play regularly in the Kiss until it, it shut down in about not ninety six I think it went. Yeah. Who else was playing about that time then, Chris? Um, Mike Lewis, he was the okay. Best. And and Sans guy. Um, yeah. For those who don't know, yeah, yeah. For those who don't know, so yeah. Entrance, I mean, that was his group back in the day. So I, yeah. I had met the original Entrance people because they often played live in there. Yeah, yeah, back, yeah. To the, back to the base, it was never released. Yeah. You know, I've got a copy of there there on tape. Brilliant tune. Yeah. Set You Free was obviously the one. The, the big one, wasn't it? Made them. Well, Mike left Fallow Air uh, Kiss then, and he moved on to um, a place called Butterflies in Oldham. He, he left Fallows in about 93. <laughs> um, so I went to Butterflies in Oldham and played a few times, but that's when Set You Free come out and where he made it really big. Yeah. Uh, so after after Fallows then, what did you, where did you play after that? Did, did things did people start to notice you playing and you started to get a bit of recognition and Yeah, uh, well in the same place, uh, in the Kiss, you had Christian uh, come on board on the Friday nights yeah. because you had a bit of a hardcore night, a bit a bit of a heavier edge music. Um and also on Wednesdays you had D Man playing, Stu Allen playing. Hell, yeah. So on a Wednesday, <laughs> tell me yeah. that, aren't it? Was, it was every night of the bloody week, mate. So, I mean, I played, I played with Stu Allen and Demand, and I got mentions on Key One Hundred Three. Got them on the tape there. So I knew, I knew Stu from a really early age. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm going back to '94, yeah. And I'll always remember Demand playing bits and pieces for the first time. I'd never heard it before, and he played it in the Kiss and. Um, yeah, they, they died to death them nights. As you know, Jay, there's a bit of a transition with music. You know, you go, go back to 90, 90, 91, 92. All your Chicago house, all your, your piano on it. The Italian music, stuff and all that, yeah. Yeah. And there was some good techno in there. I, I always liked the techno stuff, mate. Um, you know, I'm going like Frank the Wolf and all that type of stuff. And yeah. Besides, you know, all that underground techno, I really liked all that, modular expansions, all that type of stuff. And then in 93, the pace picked up. Yeah. It started getting harder, faster, all this Euro trans come in, <laughs> DJ Marussia, you know, yeah. all that type of stuff. And the pace started picking up and it, it all divided into different genres. And this is where music just expanded from being a bit of dance music into all these little genres and expanding hardcore jungle bass you know funky house yeah just went went all over the place didn't it and there was there was like there was like it was weird because some tracks you mentioned one there bits and pieces bits yeah. and pieces was i mean it, it's still huge now yeah it was it, i remember the first time i heard that and i'm thinking this is fucking decent this they're, they're bouncy it was around about the time yeah. uh Joe Inferno tribal church is out and there, like mm. and dance attack shoot massive and stuff like that. Yeah, this track came out and it was so bouncy. And it's yeah. st- it's still, you know, you play that in a club now, mm. especially if there's people there of 30, 40 years of age, fucking go yeah. off. But it was that yeah. was like a bit of a crossover that because 
you might hear bits and pieces in the state, but you'd also hear bits and pieces in the stars of the drone. It's one of those mm-hmm. like like same as Dance Attack Massive and Tribal Church. They were like yeah. little crossover ones, weren't they? You, you you'd right. get away with them at the hard yeah. edge of the stage, but in, in the um, the start off in the drone and stuff like that. Yeah, that that's the one, Jay. Yeah, yeah, just um, still a massive track today. There's a lot of like Susumi has done a sample of it. That's right, yeah. In, in, in their tune, and but there's so many you take that little sample yeah. from it. Steve so Cocky had name rings a bell. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> loads of, loads of, he's not uh, doing much these days, is he? <laughs> don't much know. <laughs> um, not like he yeah. fucking runs a festival on a radio station, that is it? <laughs> Smashing it. Yeah. So after after so after follows, what kind of gigs were you getting after that, then, mate? And the kiss and right. that. What what happened then? Uh, back back in ninety two, um, went went round to the hard dock and uh, loved it because it was. A little bit more edgy. It was a warehouse. The sound system was out of this world. And then in '93, they started playing all the harder stuff, the bouncy stuff. So I started going there then. Yeah. And then the heart, you know, you go back to all your bass generator stuff, all these new labels started coming out. You've got all your evolution stuff, '94. I just started getting harder and faster. Yeah. And, you know, Ten stone lighter, Jay. I'd be bouncing around there for eight <laughs> hours, you know, and carry on the day after. Yeah. Um, to the hardcore, loved it. Made some good friends there. DJ Reflex, still mates with them today. You know, yeah. Liam, still see him. Hoping to yeah. get Liam on. Actually, your your Paul spoke to him uh, the other day. I know he's got some stuff going on at home, but uh, we're going to try and get older uh, Reflex soon because it, again, he's, he's another name that's been it's popped up a lot. A people demand another one. I've, I've yeah. actually got. And in with the man, like a, a guy um, I used to work with called Paul Harlock. Uh, he, he works now in, in a factory, and, and he oh, sent me, I sent him a picture one day. He went, Is that Paul? And I went, Yeah, yeah. he went, Is that DJ Demand? And I went, he went, He's one of the bosses in work. <laughs> I said, yeah. Fucking yeah. tell him to get on my fucking podcast. He's one of the people that's <laughs> popped up a lot. So I used to talk about me. So you're, you're, going to, you're going to dock quite a lot, yeah. Yeah, always in the dock, mate. Uh, I couldn't keep away from the place. Uh, loved it. Um, was fortunate enough to to get a set in there a couple of times, you know. Yeah. Um, and I brought the new year in ninety five, ninety six. Yeah. I turned up there for a the night out, and um, Liam was playing in Wolverhampton that night. I think it was Pandemonium or something. And um, I get in there, and you no know, MC Raw said, "He uh, needs a DJ." So Christian, DJ Christian, was popping over the drone after he'd done his warm. He, he recommended me because I'd done the kiss with him. So next minute, I'm in a taxi going home, grabbing Take a bag tunes. of records <laughs> and, going, and going back to the dock um, to play this music. You know? Okay, now. So yeah, it was a real highlight you know, to bring the new year in, in a club yeah. that I love doing. Uh, real good experience. And then the year after, there was a big refurb in there, Jay. Um, it opens up, but not for long. I'm yeah, I remember, I remember that the video come out. They had ultimate buzz on and stuff like that for the the big yeah. relaunch. It just That's didn't have it. the same fucking mystique to it then, did it? I think it's um, you know, yeah. it's it's weird and it pe- people like what they like, and I think doing the dock up and making it a bit more like a like a club didn't really work, did it? It it, it that it was that warehouse vibe that made it what it was. Yeah, I seem to remember a lot of stages in there. They built a lot of stages and like platforms and stuff. Um, but yeah, that shut down, Jay, and I thought, that's it, never going to go in there again. Yeah. But in 2011, um, there was a competition um, with retro tracks they were doing at... Um, Ian uh, Kenyon? Yeah, a hard dock reunion they were doing. Yeah, I remember so, that. Yeah. So there was this competition <clears throat> to put a set out there for a warm up and you know the most likes or the most interaction won a slot on there and the runner up got the, the very beginning slot and then anyway I was fortunate enough to win it. Um the funny thing was I wasn't even on Facebook at the time. So I had to get me missus to sit there on the laptop and tell all her friends yeah. to go for me, you know until until the bleeding thing won. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was great. That was great getting back in there. 9th of July 11. Um, yeah. The dock 
open back up again, a place I thought I'd never see again. Crazy, um, eh? Yeah, and, and I, I played a good set in there, and yeah, brilliant, mate, great experience. So between the, the late 90s and, and around then, there was quite a big break in, in you. As they, as they say in in, um, in the interviews, there's quite a bit of a break in your resume here, Chris. I'd like to explain you that. Right, yeah. <laughs> and you'll, you'll agree, mate. What happened with all the clubs? One thing I've not mentioned is the drone, by the way. 92, when the, the quad shut in March 92, and I was in there on the last night. I'd also started going the 051, by the way, in 91. Yeah. I was there on the first night at Opens and Problem House were on. Yeah, and we had these big cone heads on. I never forget that. <laughs> we done party people That's in right, the yeah. 05 one. Um, so yeah, I was going the 05. I, I was all over the place, mate. I was never in. Uh, so I started going the drone once the quad shut, and the music in there was just right up my seat. You know? Yeah, I'm talking about the Omen, um, you know all the real hard stuff. Joe yeah. Inferno was on, you know, yeah. uh, all stuff like that. I witness all that type of techno. I, I loved it, and um, so I was I was a regular in the drone then. But going back to when I had this break in me, me DJing, uh, or even going out, yeah, it was back in '97. <laughs> Everton had gone, the dock had gone, the drone had gone, uh, kinetic had gone. All all of them mates was over. So I then ends up getting a house with me. Well, my wife now, Jane, in 98. So I wasn't really going out that much. Yeah. I was just a regular in, in Bootle, in the Merton, and Sully's, you know. But yeah. I was happy with that. And now and again, I'd go into town. But then I was in these bars in town in 98, and I heard, like, the club heads and stuff like that. I thought, I need to get out there. Yeah. People were telling me, Chris, you need to come to the 051. Anyway, was that Pickwick's opened again, and it was called Heaven. I don't know whether you remember that. That's right, yeah, yeah. Um, and I started going there again. Couldn't stay in again, me. So I was there. <laughs> that was me, right? And then I started going the 051. Then I'd be in the sunrise. And I couldn't wait to get up on Sunday morning because I knew I was going to be in the mountain that night. Yeah. Doing it all again. You yeah. Know? Did it take a toll on you? Because it's quite, quite a... Uh, it, there's, there's a few casualties in the rave. You know, if, if you're going out I'm, all the time and I'm, stuff like I'm that. I was mate, so just took it easy, you know. You yeah. know, you don't tolerance levels, Jay. So we 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 go there, do that every weekend, um, until about, it was about 2005. Um, I was in the 05 one, the last one, shut down me. Yeah. Voted. Um, so I just used to go to the Sunrise then. Yeah. Um, 2006, 2007. Uh, wasn't doing any DJing at yeah. all, nothing. Um, I'm gonna move on ten years now, Jay. Like myself, big a big jump in the uh, big jump big in the fucking jump. CV. Exactly. So you know, I'll go back to 20, 2015, Um, sitting in the kitchen in work, and our poor gets a call off. Uh, Rob D or Davy Ash, it was. And they're doing this this event in district, and it's called Party for the People. I um, don't know whether you've ever heard of that one, Jay. No. Uh, and it's just a party for the people, a bit of a reunion, old yeah. school, you know. As they do, they all started popping up, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> and he's, he was after the DJ app, was that? Ah, Chris will do it. You know, DJ for years and stuff. So that's where I got back on the scene again, Jay. I went and done this party for the people. Uh, I've done a vinyl set, very successful. And while I'm there, there's all these other people who are doing all these other bits. And, and one of them was Pulse Promotions, which is now Twisted Tunnels, yeah? Yeah. And Pulse asked me to do a set of their debut event in the tunnels, which is still going. Yeah. So I then become part of Pulse. Um, Still done party for people. Uh, by 2016, I was sort of doing every little old school thing out there. Yeah. Everyone wanted me to play. I was playing down the beach for Pulse. And by March 16, as you know, um, I'd done the last ever drone in the uni. Yeah. Chill um, FM. Was it Chill FM one on that one? Or, uh, was FM, it Ramirez? Joe, Ramirez, Joey Inferno. Wow. Uh, 
Grace event, mate, um, and it was the last ever one. <laughs> it was a, yeah. a real honour to play for Ian Kenyon, you know. Yeah, Again, I think uh, <clears throat> the, the drone reunions, I, I, when I spoke to, to Glenn Cyanide, he yeah. said you can kind of get too much of a good thing, and he didn't want to come to a point where it was a, you know, every couple of months there was a drone reunion, drone yeah. reunion, and I, yeah. Glenn's got on the record as saying, I think Ian Kenyon's took a bit, bit of a back step from all that now, hasn't he? Mm-hmm. Uh, and Glenn's yeah. got on the record as saying, well, with the actual drone reunions, that's yeah. it. There will, there will be no more, which is sad, really. Um, I yeah. think there would have been scope to keep them going. But there's also the thing there of you can flog a dead horse, can't you? You, you, can, you yeah. can keep them going for too long. I think every year would be perfect. Once a year would be perfect. But Glenn's closed yeah. the doors on them. And I think, like I say, I think Ian's um, took a bit of a back step and all that as well, wasn't he? But you played the last yeah. ever one. That's it, mate. So, so, uh, that was a you know, real honour to do that, Jay. Yeah. But, um, you know, then other... Other opportunities come my way, you know. I had Northern Ireland to uh, invite me over to play at the, um, what's it called? The old school, old school takeover, or something it was called. Um, can't remember. Going back about seven years here, you know. Yeah, that, that's um, what was on Saturday when I seen your Paul. Yeah, it, it that was, was old school takeover. School, that's right. Yeah, but I'll, I'll talk about that one in a minute. Actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I went over to Northern Ireland to do an old school event there. Uh, in Port Rush it was yeah. Um, so yeah flew over there for some of my mates stayed over a couple of days and, and played over there that, they know how to party over there mate don't they absolutely mate fucking hell I, I played in Northern yeah. Ireland once and it was um, a few of us went over we, we, we were playing in uh, the aquarium right. and this, this Irish kid come up the stairs fucking chewing his own eyebrow off uh, give, give us your number they give me number thought nothing mm. of it a couple of days later, he gets a a, 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 a pager. gets a page mm. off this lad, Sean, his name was. Mm. Phoned me on this number, so I rang him, and he's like, basically just said, I can get three three or four years over. Can't mm. pay us, but I'll put you up for the night, and, you know, he's, it's a little fucking yeah. jolly. So we went, yeah, go ahead, fuck it, why not? Yeah. And I always remember we turned up at this it was called Cheers Nightclub. It was in, um, oh, where was it? Newry. Newry it was. Um, and we turned up at this bar, and obviously, whoever was on first, we were all there. I was going on the fucking mic and all sorts. We're going back a long time now. I was fucking have thought I was a fucking MC and all that. Mm. Um, and they opened the doors, and it was like a school disco. Everyone just mm. come in, whip the coats off, and they were fucking like that straight away. And I was like, wow. I just you know, like you know, we had a nutter, don't yeah. I don't know. Here's the fucking here's the town nutter. They were all the fucking same. They were all literally as soon as they got in the doors, they were fucking like that, giving it fucking beans, bell to bell, literally fucking yeah. loving it. It was unbelievable. Yeah, great people, aren't they, mate? Yeah, but, uh, yeah, still keep in touch with all that from Northern Ireland as well. Um, yeah, really nice people, you know. Yeah. So go well, on. So old school takeover yeah. was Saturday. You said you had something today. What say about them? Yeah, I mean, I, I played at the um, the first one that they done it was last. Last March, I think it was. Yeah, it was last year now. Right? Yeah. Um, that was in the North Shore. <clears throat> so there was um, <clears throat> X-ray was over again from Ireland. Yeah. Uh, you know, Kenzo and Lee Downey. Cracking lads, them. I met them on Saturday for the first time. Fucking yeah, really uh, nice, salt of the earth, down to earth. Yeah. You know, uh, fucking yeah. hell. First time I've met them, and I just felt like I was part of the family. You know, there's no airs yeah. and graces about them. Fucking really, really good lads, them. Yeah, they're cool, mate. So, yeah, it was a uh, real honour to play, play for them as well. As uh, Matt Paul's on the video, as he does. You know, <coughs> yeah. Um, well, yeah, so going back to 2016 then, mate. Um, sort of keeping on doing these Party for People events and post promotions. That's, that was that year then. Goosebumps, uh, Mick Powney, I know you've interviewed Mick before. Yeah, I know Mick from um, back in the day, yeah. Yeah, and he started... Um, these events called Goosebumps. So again, I was involved in Goosebumps. Then the lads over the water got in touch, which is Paul McCaffrey and uh, Kev um, to do Atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you remember that? There was an Atmosphere reunion. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I grew up with Kev. Um, Kev, Kev Mack was a. Uh, Kev Mack was one of the first people I knew to have decks, and he's one of the first people who actually let me have a go over his decks. 
Me and Kevin right. go back a long, long time. I haven't spoken to Kevin yeah. a number of years now, like, but yeah, back in the day, yeah. mate, we were fucking, we were tight, me and Kev, like, fucking hell. Yeah, he's, he's yeah, brilliant DJ. He's, you know, no, no, been there right through the scene and everything, you know, like, like Mick has as well. So it was great playing, playing over there with them. And then I had, I had a couple of people ask me to do things with them, you know, events and so on. And um, in 2017, I, I teamed up with Lee, we all. I think you've interviewed Lee as well. Uh, you know, we we done back to the dock. Um, that's still going strong. Uh, yeah. I talked to the lads. I, I left there in 2019. Um, John's now teamed up with Lee and yeah, they're yeah. smashing it. They're really smashing well. it. I mean, you know, yeah. <clears throat> things, sometimes things don't work out for various reasons. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, hats off to the mate. You know, I, I've said this a few times. Mm. I've I've lucky enough to play at one of the back to the dock events it was fucking sensational mate it really was yeah, it was yeah. really really good night and uh yeah, yeah. going going from strength to strength yeah. the couture 303 podcast is now officially sponsored by dapper turkish barbers in hunts cross you can find them on wood end avenue and they do the full service there the hair the beard the ears the nose the cutthroat hot towels the lot it's the only barbers i ever go to fantastic service great lads no need to book, just pop in and see them seven days a week. If you want a nice sick fade like mine, you will not be disappointed. The absolute best in the area. That's Dapper Turkish Barbers, Wooden Avenue, Hunts Cross. And now back to the show. Yeah, I mean, I had some really good times there. Met, met some nice people. Uh, had some great opportunities from it. You know, I was fortunate enough to uh, play like Kinetic Reunions, Doncaster Warehouse, um, Rejuvenation. Wow. Playing there in uh, yeah. August August nineteen, that was. Yeah. Uh yeah, brilliant experience, mate. To yeah. uh, be a, a set outdoors on that event. Um yeah, and then to twenty nineteen I, I got involved in Digital Underground, which is a uh, techno. And it was all, all this new techno stuff. Um that was with one of my mates, Robbie Jackson. Uh, we've done digital undergrounds. People like um, oh, what's his name now? Um, John Connor. He played there, and um, yeah, a few other big names. Good, yeah. good. Done yeah. a few more of them in until October nineteen, and um, I'm trying to think. Yeah. Like, what, <laughs> How did you find these youth? By the way, I went to the. Uh, I think it was the might have been the tenth. 10th anniversary for Rejuve last year. Uh, I was doing t-shirts at the time and oh, right. I was yeah. lucky enough to get Vibes and Lively both wore my t-shirts at the event so I went down to see them. Um, Lee put me on the on the guest list mm. and uh, I went down, we, mate, we drove down there. Fucking hell. What mm. a fucking party Rejuve is, mate. Jesus Christ. It's Absolutely true. fucking brilliant. It's the best, isn't it? it, you it, know? it it's, it's fucking, it's, it's fantastic and I'm, I'm trying to get older Si as well. Um, yeah. To get him on the podcast because obviously that that size nice in this side frater him and his yeah. missus run the whole thing from the, themselves Absolutely. and from mm. from start to finish again you know even the fact that his missus stands on the front door and hugs everyone going in who else yeah. does that you know what I mean it's how how, how good, much more yeah. welcome can you feel than that <laughs> know. You, you make you feel like you know part of this big family to yeah. everyone's loyal to everyone in there. Really good, mate. Um, yeah, I'm hoping I'll, I'll get back there and see them all. I'm sure you day. will, mate. Yeah, I'm sure you will. Hopefully, mate. Yeah. So how's the Paradox reunions come out then? Because you're quite involved yeah, in them, aren't you? The Paradox, yeah, that was sort of 2019 as well. Um, you know, Marco, he's, he's been running the Paradox. Asked me to the... The Swarm, the there. Swarm legend himself. Yeah, it's great, mate. Uh, you know, because again, I used to go to Paradox back in the day. Um, not as frequent as other clubs, but you know, I would go there maybe the odd Thursday night. Yeah. Um. So I know what the Paradox was like. Yeah, decent place, big yeah. club. But um, yeah, I started doing a lot of radio stuff then, Jay. Yeah. Um, which was pure one hundred and seven. Um, DJ Scope, it was Phil Scope approached me and um. Asked if I wanted to do a set on that, so I did. And then I got a residency on there. And um, we made who's the MC, Express. I called it the Butler Express. So we had our own show. Is that Leighton? No, uh, Leighton Cross, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. fucking hell. Leighton used to MC for us in his own back in the day. I haven't seen Leighton for fucking years. Oh, I still <coughs> see Leighton, mate. He still Leighton. comes Driving to around as gas man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, you know he's self-employed now. He's uh, he's he's left us his gas. He's so he's doing his own bit. Oh, know? is he? Yeah, yeah. 
Speechlighting, yeah. So we had our own show called Butler Express, and that, yeah. that went for a number of years till, yeah, uh, I moved on to another station. Uh, Ibiza Radio was doing that for a bit. I'm on Fusion Radio now, Mersey Radio as well. Um, still doing them. Oh, 0151 Dance Radio, that was another one. Yeah. On. Um, I started producing music as a producer. I've made a couple of tracks and released them. Yeah. What are you um, using to produce your music on? He, I don't know, we just come here with some <coughs> something and put all these things in front. <laughs> I, I just said, make that to that, put that beat there, put yeah. that top end there. And yeah. <laughs> And he, he builds it for me. Yeah. Obviously. Um, but yes, things changed again with the producer and I, I now produce with someone called Mark Patrick. A brilliant producer, mate. Um, done some really good work with him and it is, his tracks are brilliant. More yeah. around the funky house. Yeah, house yeah, yeah. Stuff, you know. But um, do you know what, Jay? The reason why it's a brick wall before when I got to past 2019 was... Bleeding pandemic, weren't it? Yeah, yeah. There was, there was nothing happened then. Nothing. <clears throat> so I was like, what, what, what does it do in 20? Half ah, sitting in the house, wearing a bleeding yeah. mask. Sitting in the garden, um, yeah. It was one of them, Jay. What, what do you do? You're not out there performing anymore. Um, you know, with Digital Underground, we had Joey Belton coming over in the Fucking hell. It was all boots and confirmed. And yeah. I was even playing alongside Joey Belton. Wow. You know, but that never happened because of COVID, obviously. <clears throat> there was another one with a uh, Ramirez atmosphere. He was due to fly over in the, I think that was the April. Um, but again, that never happened because of the pandemic. Yeah. So there was some big things coming up. But never happened. Yeah. So you know, speaking to me, DJ colleagues like DJ Gigs, one of my good friends there. We were like, what are we gonna do to keep ourselves exposed to DJing? Because people will forget about it. Um, and obviously that pandemic went on, didn't it? Yeah. And this is where the live stream started. Jay. I started going online with the the uh, camera in there. Yeah. By the way, the camera I had was an uh Samsung uh, S5 or something. Yeah. In, in a cup. <laughs> in a cup filtered that way with a, Perfect. With, a, with a wire in it. Don't be giving your trade secrets away. Fucking hell. Everyone, everyone's laughing. He come down and he'd be like, where's, where's your camera for your live? Back there in the, in the see-through cup. <laughs> it sounded all right, you know, and it got, it got the message over. But yeah. yeah, I started doing all the live streaming then, mate, and kept me profile up there. Um, I'll tell you what, though, Jay, a lot of really good things come from the live streaming. Yeah. You know, it's all exposure, mate. It's all, you know, I, 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 I was aware of you um, mm. a couple of years ago. I think it was when you, you, you were involved in Back to the Dock. I'd seen your name on the flyer for that, because obviously you... you when you see something of, of DJs who you know, you, you know, it catches your eye, doesn't it? And obviously, back to the dock, I was like, okay, you know, a hardcore night's coming back. I think I even submitted a demo myself. I might even have sent it to you. I can't remember now, a long time ago. But of late, I can't put my Instagram on without seeing your fucking name. You're like fucking shit in the field, mate. You're fucking everywhere. <laughs> yeah, so something, something's going right for you. Yeah, it's, it's going all right, mate. You know, like, like saying the live stream, sort of that. That, like the Paradox Reunion, you know, I think I had um, over 9,000 views on one of the bits and yeah. eight on another, you know, it was great. There's a lot, a lot of exposure from the views and the people yeah. interacting with you. So all this interaction online, you sort of get these virtual friends, if you like. When yeah. things come to life, they've come to the events. Yeah. So something's gone really well from the live stream. But one of the big things that happened for me on the live stream, though, Jay, I used to do Sunday nights, uh, just my own bit, you know. Um, and right after me, there was another live stream, sort of overlapped by half an hour with me. So I used to watch them, and they used to watch me. And it was the Rewind. Okay, so this is like Dave Wordy, Lee McKay, and it was Jenko. Yeah, um, I used to work with Dave Jenko, yeah. 
All right. Uh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Work with, work with Al. Work with Dave for about ten years. I remember when, yeah. De- when he first started DJing. Yeah, he was coming to me for little tips and all that. He's fucking smashing yeah. himself now, isn't he? Yeah. <coughs> Go well. on, carry on, mate. Yeah. So um, the the rewinds approached me and said, "Do you want to uh, do you want to come on board with the rewind?" And I was thinking to myself, "Why? Why are you asking me? Why are all the DJs you've got out there? Why me?" And I spoke to Dave. I said, Why, how come you're asking me, mate? He went, because you're not a dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of them out there, mate. <laughs> I, went, I can attest to that, definitely. And I just went, right, okay. Yeah, Sam, that's good enough me? for me. <laughs> me lad. So um, I then become part of the Rewind. Yeah. Um, and I joined their live streams rather than going through myself. What that's built is, mate, we can see it now, can't you? The Rewind has become a brand, music yeah. medicine. So so where I'm at now, I'm in partnership with Dave Worthy and Lee McKay with Music Medicine. You know, that's our, our brands if you like. Yeah, yeah. Um and things are going really well, Jay. You know, we're, we're doing loads of events. Um we've got one on the 29th of April. The last couple have been a real success. We're putting guests on and we've got little John on on the 29th of April. Well, that's good, because this, this, this podcast will probably be out at the end of April, so that'll coincide with that. So where can people get tickets if they want them, Skiddle? If they want Skiddle, mate, so I've, yeah. got a, I've got a small number left in the garage. Yeah, yeah they, they might, might be sold out by the time this goes to air, mate. <laughs> well, yeah, do you know what, Jay? It's doing really well. It's, uh, Fantastic. You know, the, the tickets are flying out, and they still are. Um, so, yeah, I've become part of something really credible. Yeah. And the lads yeah. are cool, you know. There's, there's no one trying to control what anyone else is doing. It's all very open, you know. Yeah. We all support one another. We've got each other's back, and that's how I want it to be. And what more can you ask for? Because, like you said before, unfortunately, there is a lot of dickheads in this scene. A lot of people out there. Uh, I'm not going to name any names, obviously, uh, but there's people out there who, who think they're better than they are, and people who think they're self entitled and stuff like that, and. You know, it is what it is. But yeah, it's it's nice, like I say, <clears throat> when I went on Saturday and I met uh I met I'd never met Kendo. I'd, I'd spoke to Kendo on the phone. Right. I'd never met him. And I turned up and there was a guy on the front desk, uh, on the on the front door, and I, I thought, is that Kendo or is that Lee? I didn't know which one was which because I'd never no pictures yeah. on his WhatsApp. You know, in this day and age, like there's no pictures on the WhatsApp, I don't know what they look like. And he went, yeah. uh, he went, Ken's playing now, so I thought, that must be Lee then. That's going to be Lee, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and they were fucking <laughs> brilliant lads, pair. But both the, both had the yeah. missus there helping out as well. I think um, yeah. Ken's missus was helping out with the, with the thingy. Uh, Lee's missus just come as a, as a, as a punter, like. But uh, yeah, yeah. crack cracking lads, and it, it makes a difference, mate. It really does. Yeah. When you meet someone who's like-minded, you know, mm. and um, there's no ego there, you know, they're not, they're not, they're not, they're not to, I don't think they, they're even making a lot of money. They're just doing, they're doing these nights to put yeah. them on. And what a night it was, you know. Exactly. Fantastic. Doing something they love, they love doing, mate. And, um, yeah. you know, bringing those, uh, that music back to life from the drone. Yeah. You know, well, that's it. Uh, and I know playing at the last old, uh, old school takeover in the March, you know, I'd done an earlier set, but it was it was all the bouncy Joe Inferno, Die yeah. Witten, Ramirez. It was, yeah. it was really good, you know, just playing all that stuff again. Yeah. It's not something you can get to play that often. Yeah. But um, a friend of mine, again, Robbie Jackson, he, he came up with this uh, other idea last June. It was called uh, We Ain't Going Out Like That, uh, which we've done in districts. Now, Ramirez was on at that one as well. Um, and Cyanide was back there. Trix yeah. was back there. Uh, and that was all drone stuff, you know. So yeah. you heard you all that. All that. Pumping Euro techno stuff and yeah. it was great. So my set, my second ever podcast was was Cyanide, <clears throat> and I went, I actually went to his house to do it. It was his flat, right. and um, when we finished, wrapped up recording, he went, look at this, and he showed me the flyer. He went, I can't show anyone. He went, it's not out there yet. He had a big shotgun on it, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. I love a shotgun on and, and the lineup yeah. and all that. And he was saying it's yeah. fucking, you know, the good lads and all that. So whatever happened with that one, that that. that um, never a second one of them. Perhaps, mate. I'll have to. Uh, do you know what, mate? I, I'm being really honest. It, it sort of clashed with what the old school takeovers vision was. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I was just the DJ for that event, and I know it, it did upset a few people. Um, 
we spoke about it and moved on, mate. Yeah. There, was, uh, there was no intent there to do that. Um, but yeah, it did clash a little bit. Yeah. Was of the old school takeover? I'm not. I'm, I'm not really into that. I, I you know, I, I really like what the old school takeover yeah. were doing, and I was. I say I was fortunate enough to play play on the first event. It's sad, um, really, when two people have the same idea. You know, yeah. th- there is enough room for both of them. Unfortunately, you know, th- it's not a uh, it's not a huge fucking scene. The old school scene's coming back massively, but still, yeah. you know, you, you can put an event on with two hundred people, you'll sell it out. But it, there's no room to have uh, yeah. rivalries and stuff like that because there's not there's not enough. You know, it's all it's going to do is is dilute it, isn't it? You know. Exactly, yeah. So I, I can't see another one of them happening, to be yeah. honest, yeah. But uh, it was all right. Yeah. Event, you know. But I think the old the old school takeover is is all of that stuff and it's, yeah. it's doing good. Doing really they're good. over in Ireland this week. I was talking to the uh, X Ray yeah. uh, and they they've yeah. got an event in Ireland. I think Ken's going over for that as well. Right. Uh, nice. like yeah, fantastic. So what you couldn't set up then, Chris, at home? You, you, with your um, decks and stuff. What do you uh, the XTJ, you know, the uh, RX1. Yeah. Um, I was one of them, Jay. I'd, I'd turn up playing in the tunnels to a CD, Jay. And I'd have to put the music on a CD yeah. uh, before it. But I had no real experience of mixing on them because yeah. I was always ever at the turntable. I said, you know what, these gigs are getting far more getting really frequent so I need to yeah. invest in some digital technology so I did I got this Pioneer XDJ um, best thing I've ever bought got that in the March 16 two weeks before the drone and yeah. then uh, there you go mate it's, uh, it's the best thing I've ever bought I yeah. hardly took my vinyl anymore because I can't be asked getting them out of the sleeves <laughs> and I put them back in you know yeah uh, I've got the RX3 and it's a fucking fantastic bit of kit, you know, for what it is. If you, I, I couldn't afford or justify getting two uh, Pioneer CDJs and a, and a oh. fucking 800 fucking pound mixer. You're talking, you're talking fucking, you're, you're talking about six grand for a full setup nowadays, aren't you? Where even the RX3, I think it's about two, two grand, 1700 pounds, something like that. And it's as yeah. good as, for, for me it is anyway, you know, I'm not, I'm not a fucking, I don't, yeah. I don't need, I don't need anything that's not on there. No, I'm the same, mate. I'm, I'm not asked. It's got, it's got in and out two two channels, and I can mix music and I can record it. Yeah. I was eleven hundred, Nick, mate. Best yeah. thing I've ever done. Fucking boss, aren't uh, so I've still got it out there, you know. So, um, yeah. So the latest things for me, mate, is uh, is mu- music medicine. Yeah. You know that, that that's flying. Really enjoying it. Um, and I've got a residency now as well down in. Um, the Brandy snooker club, Florida. yeah. Crosby, yeah. You know Waterloo there. So, yeah. Uh, back in when, there. When's that? Fridays or Saturdays? That Saturday nights. Yeah. yeah tensile, tensile two. Yeah. I still do all these functions as well. You know, all private gigs. So yeah. You know, I'm still playing Sweet Caroline. And yeah. All that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. still got your still got jive running at the front of your box. <laughs> Yeah, all all the uh, party stuff on. So yeah, still, still, still to all, I still get booked regularly. Fantastic. Yeah, um, and the, the very latest one I'm involved in is um, the house project, uh, sound events. This is with uh, Benny Nilsson, um, a new, a new, um, new, new nights, new venture. You know, yeah. New, yeah, uh, he's got a new brand and um, wants me on board. So I've got quite a few of them coming up, mate, starting on the 1st of April. Yeah. Um, so it's an all day event so I'm down the North Shore. Fantastic. Uh, so, what, what do you prefer to play, Chris? If, if, if someone said to you, right, uh, you've, you've, got a, you've got a day off, go and, go and play some tunes for yourself. What, what do you yeah. prefer to play? What If you were going to construct a set for yourself or yeah. maybe, maybe a little mix for the gym or something like that. What, what yeah, would you be playing? You'd be surprised, mate. Um, I like funky house. Yeah. I like Jack and House. I like house melodic. I like I like all of that. Um, don't get me wrong, mate. I still like all the artist stuff. I still yeah. like all the old school. Yeah. I still like all the pump and house, all the harder side of things. But my preference now is all this newer stuff. <clears throat> uh, it's just nice to listen to it's yeah. groovy um, 
Yeah, I like playing that, mate. Yeah, and when yeah, I play I like think you're there, finally growing up, isn't it? <laughs> you're yeah, fi- finally mature. I had this conversation. Who was it with yesterday? Um, Paul O.H. <clears throat> and right. he said, as he's getting older, he's, he's maturing and he's he's starting to listen to like more tech house. He just he sent me a tech house mix that he's playing. Right. I just yeah. can't get into all that. Me, I'm, I'm a metal head. Me, I, I like me, me rock and me metal. Um, yeah. So when I'm when I'm not. Got not got a gig coming up or not like that. I'm, I'm listening mm. to fucking Slipknot and Pantera and stuff like that. Well, <laughs> I, 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 I used to be into it myself. So, yeah. I, I mean, I was into Anthrax, Testament, yes. Slayer, Nathan. Slayer, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had all that, Metallica. Yeah. Uh, I've seen Metallica live twice. Brilliant, mate. Love anything <laughs> like that. Noise. I like noise, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was into me thrash metal. Uh, yeah. A lot of it, mate. Yeah. I liked ACDC. Yes. ACDC is one of my favourite bands ever, yeah. But I was also into the hip hop, uh, the rap, anything with a really deep bass line. Because I yeah, used yeah. to have a CD super woofer and I used to watch the speaker like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember being in the drone and putting the uh, a fucking a, a cup on yeah. the stage and just seeing the ripples it was like fucking yeah. the scene in uh, Jurassic Park when you look at the yeah. glass and, and they know the dinosaurs coming yeah, yeah and you're sitting out to grab it and it'd be gone yeah cyanide's <laughs> kicked it off the fucking stage speaking onto the floor yeah. <laughs> yeah that's it mate right? so um, the other things I've, I've, I'm made up to be back involved in as well as uh, Twisted Tunnels down yeah. back at Williamson Tunnels again um, last last October it was in um, twenty. That was a year last October actually, twenty twenty one. Um, gets a message off Ebo, you know, she want to do a set again. Was uh, I sort of I was with Pulse for a couple of years, and then you know they, they went 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 to a sort of another direction. You know, got sort of the bigger names. I'm trying to build a brand. Yeah. So we've got what the vision was, mate. Um, and I sort of, I come away from Pulse then. Um, as you know, it's grown into something really credible now. That's called Twisted Tunnels. Yeah. Um, yeah, I got invited back there, October 21, with Ebo, Joey and Lynn. Uh, done a set, mate, and I've been back there since. Fantastic. So got, got four events of those a year. Um yeah, got, got some big things coming up, Jay. Can't yeah, well, we, we spoke on the phone before, and there's certain things right. you can't say now. Uh, I mean, they may or may not be out by the time this goes, uh, this gets published. This is, this is probably going to be out. What have we got? We've got um, <clears throat> Davey T on Wednesday. Uh, that's recording, and that, like I said, that by the time this comes out, that'll be out there. And then I've got Rosala. I've got Rosala on. I was fucking made up to do that. You know, that's fucking mad, you know. Yeah, I started cool. these podcasts a year ago. And it started out like quite organically, just like speaking to people. You know, I think the first one was Lee Hall. I, I interviewed him in his kitchen, <clears throat> and um, and then I reached out to Sina, and he said, "Yeah." And then who, who'd have thought? Fucking twelve months after, I'd be speaking to fucking Rosala. And what a fucking lovely, lovely woman she is. She's so funny. You know, I I had a little back and forth there. Um, obviously, I've, I've got a number now. You know, mm. as you do, you've got Rosala's phone number, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'd be sitting in the house and I'd, I'd be saying to my missus, like, we're watching, um, are we watching? Oh, uh, San Andreas with the rocking. And right. uh, and Carly Minogue, randomly, he's got a fucking little cameo in that. And mm. I said to Jenny yesterday, you know, she uh, she covered Rosala's song. And she just looked mm. at me and went, if I hear the name Rosala once more in this fucking house. <laughs> and it's a big deal, you know. I'm sat in my fucking kitchen talking to a pop star. You know what I mean? It's fucking yeah, nuts. Definitely. So we had got David. After 30 years, Jay, yeah, when she, you know, everybody's free and all yeah. that coming out. Are you ready to fly? Yeah. All them tunes, mate, you would never have thought that you could speak to someone in yeah. them days, would you? It's, it's nuts. That, that it's level nuts. and now. Oh, yeah, Brilliant. even Saturday, started, I was I went to Williamson Tunnels to promote the podcast. I put a poster oh. up and we had, we had flyers and stuff. And um, I was speaking to Glenn, and we were stood at the back, like at the back of the rave. And I said, It's fucking mad, isn't it? I said, 25 years ago, I said, You'd be on the stage and I'd be on the dance floor. I said, There we are, like a pair of our granddads stood at the fucking back, yeah. talking about the fucking weather. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, yeah, so I've got, um, I've lost my fucking train of thought now. Rosala, Rosala. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had, I had David C, then Rosala, and then, and then obviously you'll, you'll be out probably the end of April, 
That'll probably be right. the next one after that. And then I'm, I'm recording one tomorrow, going down to Stoke to speak to MC Energy, uh, who oh, runs right. the Kinetic. He runs the Kinetic reunions. Yeah, I've like yeah. done, done a few things for him, a few yeah. sets for that. Nothing bad, so I'm going to speak to Alex tomorrow. So, I'm going to finish off now, Chris, with some quick wow. fire questions. Are you oh, ready? Go ahead. <clears throat> Chris Butler, I will take your first answer and your first answer only. <laughs> Rocky yeah. three or Rocky four? Three. Summer or winter? Summer. You walk into a shop and it's fully stocked. What's your go to chocolate bar? Galaxy. What superpower would you have? Strength. <laughs> You've already got that, you cunt. <laughs> More what, what, yeah, what would be your first purchase? Your first purchase if you won the Euro Millions tonight? RS3. Jam donuts or custard donuts? Custard. Custard. Mmm. Custard, yeah, custard. <laughs> if you had a time machine, if you go back to one night, which club would you go to? What? Alive or dead, who would you like to have dinner with? Me dad. What scares you? Uh, drowning. Who's your favourite DJ to watch or listen to? Fussy bastards, you know, Jay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you can pick yourself who you want, you know. <laughs> what <I listen> to. <laughs> Horrible lad, isn't it? I, yeah. you know I, I don't really go on and listen to no. anyone. So That's all right. If you, if you ask me, that, I'd say Dave Graham, mate. Yeah, I was okay. very inspired by his music in the day. Yeah. Bath or shower? Shower. Night Rider or Airwolf? Night Rider. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Nintendo or Sega? Nintendo. Have you got a favourite MC? Cyanide. Grifter or Chopper? Chopper. An early night or a lion? Lion, mate. And the final question, be careful how you answer this now. Mm. What's the best podcast you've ever been on? Oh, some lads, I think it was name was Jay Viper. Hey! <laughs> right, Chris, it's been an absolute pleasure, mate. Uh, anything else you want to wrap up with? Any, any shout-outs or mentions? Yeah, shout-out to the Music Medicine lads, Dave Worthy, Lee McKay. <clears throat> um, you make gigs, Mark, Mark Patrick, uh, everyone out there who supported us, you know. Forgot to mention decades of dance. I went and played that the other month as well. Yeah, uh, that was brilliant. So hopefully we'll be back there soon. A decade of dance over the water. Steve McMillan smashing it, mate. He's doing well. Fantastic. Loads, so that's another one. Uh, yeah. So shout out to Steve. Um, yeah. Everyone who knows me, all my mates. I'm going to yeah. give a quick shout out to Chris Tomo for hooking us up for this. Uh, yeah. And to Paul Butler as well. Yeah. Your, your, yeah. your little and brother, Paul. Paul. We were talking about yeah. your Paul actually yesterday. It's, it's fucking mad. Yeah. He's he's my age, isn't he? 47, 48. Yeah. Uh, he's probably my kind of build as well. And he can still do yeah. a stand and backflip, the cunt. I've never seen anything like it. Like fucking, it defies <laughs> logic. He's like a fucking bumblebee. When you see Isn't a bumblebee he? with the little wings, you think, why the fuck can yeah. that fly? <laughs> How's he getting over here? Yeah? I always wonder how he how he defies the laws of gravity. Mate, <laughs> yeah. I can only do it on the trampoline now, mate. I wouldn't sure. even fucking chance that. Jesus Christ, yeah. I don't be fucking next door's garden. So yeah. thanks everyone for tuning in. Uh, like I yeah, say, nice next one. up <laughs> next up we've got Alex MC Energy. Uh, and then beyond that, who knows? So thanks for tuning in, guys. Don't forget you can yeah. catch me on Instagram at jvyperdj um, and make sure you like and subscribe the video take care everyone thank you nice one. yeah